Well, we really believe in family-centered practice here at Coweta County Defects. Um, safety, permanency, and well-being are so important in everything that we do here in OFI. Um, our case managers all believe that the faster that benefits go out to customers or the timeliness of benefits to customers is of the utmost importance, be it for food stamps, Medicaid, TANF, whatever. Um, children are safer with their parents when the parents know they can feed them and when the parents know they can take them to the doctor if they're sick. Uh, we all know that if your child is sick or hungry, it frustrates us as parents. I have four children. I, I know what it's like to uh, be frustrated because your child is sick or hungry. And so all of our case managers really strive to get benefits to customers as fast as possible. We started this a little over two years ago, focusing and well-being is so important through OFI. It's really the first line of defense against child abuse. And we really feel that way. Uh, our director was not, we got a new director two years ago, and he was not uh, very familiar with OFI things, and so we were training him. And he just suddenly one day said, what y'all are doing is preventing child abuse. Well, we had, but at the time we were all in an all appointment system, you know, and things. So we worked to get our intake on a, on a same day interview system, and it's worked out great. And um, we're getting the benefits to the customers very quickly now here in Coweta. When we started to make our changes here at Coweta County Defects, um, we, had, we had everybody in together as a group, and we talked about them. And we talked about how it was so important to get um, the benefits to the customers timely to help them avoid a child abuse and neglect, to avoid having so many um, calls coming in, um, and uh, to avoid having so many diversion cases in social services. And, one, and so we decided to go to a walk-in intake system it took us a few months to get it all tweaked, but uh, the case managers had, had buy-in. They had input. And because of the fact they could say, I think this will work, I think this won't, I think we should try this, they bought into it. We also had weekly meetings every Friday morning at 9 o'clock for 15 or 20 minutes. And we talked about the family-centered practice. We talked about the steps in safety, the steps in permanency, the steps in well-being. We talked about how important uh, everything that we do is in those areas. And it was not with just economic support, it was with social services, case managers also. We had the entire office involved in those Friday morning meetings so that we could all understand more about what each other did. And um, we even paired case managers together for a little while. That lasted a few months. And if they had questions, they'd go to that one case manager from social services or OFI to get help with Medicaid for a child in foster care or to get to get Medicaid with the child they were dealing with the CPS investigation on. And now it's gotten so that everybody really knows everybody well and, can, and, and everybody cooperates with everybody. When we paired up OFI and social service case managers individually, I mean, they chose who they wanted to pair up with. And um, that worked great. And in some cases, those pairs are still together unofficially and they still go to each other for things. But um, we've had some people leave and some people come, you know, since then. And now it's, it's really just a wor great working relationship. And we all realize that we're all social service case managers. Uh, uh, everybody realizes that they deal with OFI in some, re in some respect because everybody is involved in helping get food stamps and Medicaid and other needed benefits uh, into the home. We even took one social service case manager and made them a resource case manager. And so they deal with, when, it, when a person comes in applying for food stamps uh, and Medicaid with it or other programs, and they have an issue uh, other than something we can help with in that area, we give them to that resource case manager and she helps them with glasses, she helps them with prescription drugs, she helps them with housing, she helps them with utility bills. and and. She is really an all-in-one case manager to help not have diversion cases. And so 
Really, she is the diversion case manager for social services, even though we don't call her that. Um, and so she's referred, all our OFI case managers and social service case managers make referrals to her. And um, so we used one OFI, I mean, social services position for that to help promote safety, permanency, and well being at the front. We're trying to deal with those issues for family centered practice at the beginning when the person first comes in the door to defects. When someone comes to see us for OFI, they tell us their names, they tell us their social security numbers, they tell us what's going on in their home. They came to us for help. And, and they're very willing to tell us most anything we need to know. Whereas if you have a CPS call, a report, and a social service case manager goes out to their house, then they didn't ask them to come there. And a lot of times they can be very hostile and not give the social service investigator the information they need. And so we found it's much easier to deal with this up front when they're willing to, to uh, tell us because they came to us. So therefore, once we do their food stamp interview or their food stamp Medicaid interview or TANF, and they have other needs, we refer them to our resource case manager and she helps them with those other needs so that hopefully we never get a call and we never have, a, have to have a social service uh, investigator go out to their home. We have had such a big reduction in our social services referrals since we started this. It, it has really reduced and we're all so proud of that. We're also very, very proud of our economic support case managers who are doing a wonderful job and, and maintaining their caseloads even with vacancies and with the state budget the way it is. You know, we can't hire people. And um, they're maintaining the huge caseloads that we've gotten because of the economy. And uh, our intake workers are, are fantastic. We even had 100% food stamp SOP. Every application was finished without being over in the month of February for food stamps here in Coweta County. I've been supervising a long time. Ten and a half years is a long time for a defect supervisor around here, uh, in this region especially. Um, actually, I've been supervising longer than any other person in supervision in this region. Um, and I find that to get case managers to really buy into something, it's got to be something of worth. Don't ask them to buy into something just to see if it works. I mean, you can ask them, let's try this and see if it works. But, but to really buy into something, it's got to be something of worth, something that's really going to help them and help the customers. But you also got to treat your case managers with great respect. Uh, case managers don't like to be told what to do. I personally don't like to be told what to do. An asking tone is better. Would you, could you, will you? And I always say please and thank you. Case managers are people of worth. All our customers are people of worth. We should always want to treat everyone with great respect. Be careful when you send somebody an email. Make because calls. You don't have the, the added luxury of voice inflection. And so when you send an email, make sure that it's written so that they know that you're asking that you want their input, that you want their opinions about situations, and value those and use them if they're good. There's nothing better that can help people buy in to a, to a new thing, such as when we bought into family, we had family centered practice, the case managers were asked, what do you think about this? And every one of them right to begin with said, we know that we've been doing those things all along. Yes, we can do them faster and better. And, but you've got to ask. We all don't like to be told what to do. We like to be asked what to do. And I think that's been my, if you want to call it a secret to success and supervision. I never ask a case manager to do anything I won't do myself. I grew up in a grocery store. My daddy owned it. My daddy didn't ever ask anybody to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. Somebody broke a jug of cooking oil. We all, man, him, me, my sister, and the lowliest bag boy would all, all were, were capable of mapping, mopping it up. You know, you don't ever ask somebody to do something that you won't do. So when you're dealing with your case managers, treat them with respect 
and only 